for being with us here at Unity of Walnut Creek. Music is one of those things that helps us touch the deep wisdom, the power, the presence within the Christmas experience. We're so fortunate today to have our choir to take us into a beautiful musical experience and then we get to touch on a little deeper look at what that meaning really is. Thank you for joining us and thank you for bringing your consciousness of that divine love to be a part of the greater whole that cares for us all.
thank you to our joyful noise choir. Thank you, guys. Yeah. And Sheila, who brings them to us with such music and talent. Thank you. And Fusion, way to hang in there with us, guys. You guys are super. Ah. Good morning. Welcome to Unity. And to those of you online, wave to everybody there. Yeah, it's good to see you guys. I love it. When we connect with folks that have been online and looking at us, they always talk about waving back to us. So I did that. Just, yeah, yeah, we get it. Oh, if, if you're new to Unity, a special welcome to you, to our uh, beautiful choir Christmas Sunday and to this positive path for spiritual living where we get to, even, even at this Christmas time, when we're celebrating this beautiful tradition and uh, the spiritual roots and knowledge that it comes from, that we're still touching on those universal truths that are found in so many paths. And what, a, what a joy it is to find them all as one. So as we're opening our service, one of the things that we want to do is invite that growth of awareness within us of this divine presence. So let's invite that growth through this beautiful experience of affirmative prayer as we share our opening affirmation together. Together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Growing in that awareness of this presence. Again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness. Letting this love, this goodness, flow in and through us. Once again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And it is so. Here within our hearts, in this sacred moment. Amen. So let's join together and sing.
So here in our hearts, let's enter into this experience of prayer together. This turning within and here in our hearts we touch this divine presence within each of us. So as the choir gives us this gift of music, I invite you to let that music be part of the invitation to the very center of your heart. Feel that divine presence within your heart. feeling that presence that is within, within our hearts, this infinite love. For what is that which is called the Christ, but the very nature of love, this divine presence within each of our beings? And it is born in us when we let it express through us. The Mother, Father, God, in this inner time, awaken our awareness of this presence, of this beautiful power that each of us are. wonderful it is at this sacred season to reflect on those that we want to honor with the love we feel. To say, you have meaning to me. You are a valued part of my life. I see who you really are. I see your beauty, your wisdom, your light. I invite you for that moment just to think of your Christmas season that is before you. Whatever that gathering that happens of family, of friends, or Perhaps it's that quiet time. But to each one, beyond gifts, beyond the food that's served or the things that are said, from your heart flows a love. 
as though it were a mantle of light that you enfolded each one in. Each one is blessed. And with that gentleness, each one is healed and uplifted. And as it is for those close to you, so as you walk into stores and with those that we work with or gather to take care of those many, many things that fill our days. Those that you touch are surrounded with this mantle of love. As though wrapped in that beautiful light because that love flows from your heart. as wonderful as it is to feel it, to know its sacred reality as a part of this world we create. Now for a moment, feel the love that is for you. It is an infinite love. It is a love without condition. It is a love that treasures your being. And knows your essence at depth. to open to this love. We enter a simple time of silence. Using those words of the Master, peace, be still. Peace, be still.
Mother, Father, God. We're so grateful to be connected to this divine presence you are in us and experience it as this flow of love through our hearts. And so we take this beautiful power to heal and uplift and we send it forth first into our own bodies for our healing and well-being and to our minds and hearts for wisdom and understanding. And then we send it out across this spiritual community touching each one and blessing everyone in their worlds. We unfold the prayer requests that are brought here, knowing with each one you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. And this love flows from our hearts out across the communities in which we live across our nation and on to touch the peoples of the world to heal and bless and bring peace within all hearts. And we send this love to all who join us in prayer, whether in mosque or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillsides. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. And we send this love to this beautiful earth on which we live to bring harmony to our systems, and bring balance, and to bring blessing to all her creatures. And this love flows from our hearts about the world to touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. And with deep gratitude, once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world.
Jennifer Hooker, and it's my pleasure to highlight a few of the many upcoming events here at Unity of Walnut Creek. For our family Christmas Eve service at 5.30, our Unity children have created a very special service for you. Your heart will open this Christmas as you watch the young ones light their candles and hold them high, acknowledging that the Christ light shines in them. Our traditional candle lighting service is at 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Sacred music, both joyous and profound, will embrace you as we celebrate this holy night together. The music will call angels to join us, and you will feel the touch of their peace on our hearts. It's time to let go. Let go of all those concerns from your past year. Burn them up and release them. Attend our New Year's Eve burning bowl service and enter the new year without the baggage of the old one. Then create the one you want for the new year. To find out more about these activities and other classes we have, please consult your bulletin and or our website. And until you hear the gong, please enjoy taking a quick moment to greet the people immediately around you.
all ready for Christmas. <laughs> I don't see many hands. We're lucky. We got a few days left, okay? Now, have, have you noticed that Christmas, that we kind of experience a little different each year? Yeah. And there, there's always something new that we're learning about that experience. For instance, I, I learned just the other day, uh, my three-year-old granddaughter was explaining the manger scene in our house. Now, the manger scene was created by uh, wood carvers in Montana. So the wise men are ranchers and oilmen and, you know, and the shepherds are Native Americans with animals. And so she was explaining it, it to me, and, and they all have these big coats on because it's a Montana scene, I thought. But she explained it was because baby Jesus was born at the North Pole. So there's, a, there's always a new way of looking at it, you know? <laughs> One of the things that delights me in this learning that continues to happen in, through Christmas is the unfolding of awareness. Think of back as that child experiencing Santa Claus. What, a, what an experience. You know, Mommy and Daddy have been everything, and suddenly there is this something that's greater that cares about me, that would want to know what I want. And I can, I can, I can ask, and it will respond to me. What a beautiful beginning of our God thought, our ways of beginning to understand that greater presence. The unfolding that then happens, the, the creation within that child's heart of, of that hope for that which is greater actually to me, becomes one of the births of our experience of prayer. Let me share with you a child's letter. This letter was found in a post office in a major city. It was addressed to Santa at the North Pole. Dear Santa, I hope you get my letter. I am 11 years old, and I have two little brothers and a baby sister. My father died last year, and my mother is sick. 
I know there are many who are poorer than we are, and I want nothing for myself. But would you send us a blanket, because Mommy's cold at night? It was signed, Susie. Isn't that prayer? Isn't that the beginning to understand in some way there's something greater that I can reach out to? As we then begin to go through that experience of having to let go of, of the form, as Santa isn't quite the way that we thought, but the experience continues. How many times have you found God wasn't quite the way that you thought? But the experience continues. And then that amazing experience when we become adults and for many of us parents, and suddenly that presence moves in and through us at Christmas. Wow. What a teaching. And the amazing magic that we touch there. And we say magic because we really don't know how to describe it. It's something, something beyond in one of our classes in the last few weeks, somebody shared the experience of having just moved into a uh, new town and being without money. Uh, so there was no Christmas, single mom, children, and no connections there for support and uh, very little for food. And understanding and trying to make the best. But there was a ring at the door. and She went and opened the door, and here was a big box with food and toys and clothes. And nobody knew she was there. No one knew of her need. Whenever you think, no one knows. There is always an awareness of you. And it's this change of awareness that begins to happen. Because whatever, whatever that Christmas experience is about, it comes back to an unfolding awareness, an amazing experience of expansion of consciousness and so I want to touch that awakening part of it but I want to go to the other Christmas story the one we never read it comes from that other gospel it's John it's called the mystical gospel and it's called that because it's understood that there's nothing literal about it even for the literal people, it's, they understand it's, <laughs> it's, it's a set of symbols and, and attempts to touch that greater consciousness that we as spiritual beings are seeking to awake to. And it goes, In the beginning was the Word, in Him was life, and the life was the light of all mankind, the true light that gives light to everyone and was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, but born of God. Now, knowing there's probably a number of people who have been conditioned to still try and hear that literally, <laughs> let me share it as I understand it. 
In the beginning was the Word, this creative divine force and intelligence that has brought forth us and all of life. And in that presence was life and the light that was the light of all mankind. This presence, the light of each one of us. The very life within us. The true light that gives light to everyone. This, now, we're, we're talking here about awareness, light, illumination. So it's this process, this divine presence and process, that brings forth this, this awakening. He was in the world, though the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. In that world, in that third dimensional consciousness itself, we aren't able to be fully aware of this divine presence. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. So in this state, as the child of God, we have to grow into awareness. And how do we do that? Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed on his name. Now, believing on his name doesn't mean that Jesus must have been called Jesus. That's not what it's about. Belief is not, I think so, I'm convinced. When we believe something, we embody it. So it's the embodiment, and the name does not mean what you're called. The name in any spiritual text is the nature of that. So those that embody Love, which is the nature of the divine. In that embodiment of love is the awareness awakened that we are children of God, that we are spiritual beings. That's the other Christmas story. Now, one of the gifts is that Jesus is celebrated in this because he accomplished that. He brought forth that awareness. We call that awareness, out of the Christian tradition, it's called Christ. Out of the Hindu tradition, it's called Atman. Out of the Buddhist tradition, it's called the Buddhist mind. It's not a religious thing. It is an awareness capacity within each of us of who we really are. That's the consciousness that is behind it. And it's so simple. It's so simple because it means embracing, expressing from our beings, the love. So, it's been long enough. I get to share with you my favorite Christmas story. Okay, I had to wait seven years. I had to, I, you know, each year, I bet I can't do it now. Okay, it hasn't been long enough since I talked about it. But I, that's, I figure that's long enough. I can get, go back to it. Okay. So this, this is a story of uh, a man, a boy. His name was Jay Frankston. And Jay was Jewish. Now, one of the things about Jay's childhood was he really loved Christmas, except as a Jewish boy, he didn't get to do Christmas. All his other friends had these beautiful Christmas trees that, that sparkled in presents, and his folks said, oh, we don't do that. So finally, he grew up, and he had his own family. He said, we're doing it. Okay, so he had a beautiful Christmas tree. Now, now, he put a star of David at the top, so when his friends came over, they could call it a Hanukkah bush. Okay, but Santa Claus came. He understood Santa Claus was about this marvelous love. And so he, he got into it. And then he, he wanted to do Santa Claus even a little better. So he went out to a mask maker. He said, you know, just t taping on the beard didn't work. So he went out to a mask maker, and he had a, had a Christmas mask made. He had a, a, a padded costume designed for him. So he really became Santa Claus, and he stepped into that Santa Claus and shared that with, with his family and with his friends. And then, 
One time, just before Christmas, he was walking down the street. My guess is it's New York. Okay. Walking down the street, and there was a little girl trying to put an envelope in the mailbox. And her mom comes over and lifted her up. She, and he heard her say to her mom that that's my letter to Santa. So he started thinking, where do those letters go? So he went to the post office, and he asked them, and they had a room there where letters for Santa went. So he started reading those letters. That letter from little Susie was one that he found. Now, he found lots of Christmas lifts, give me this and that, and that wasn't what he was interested in. But he found that first year in just beginning to look through those letters, he found eight like Susie's. So he went out and he sent a telegram to each child. Got your letter. I'll be there Christmas Day, wait for me, Santa. And so he got in, a, got in a car, his wife drove him. He got his presents and his pack, and he went to each one of those houses. So little Susie not only got a, a blanket for her mommy, but she got beautiful things for hers and her brothers and sisters. And so did seven other children, other families, with a number of children. And the next year, there were 20. And then 120. And he'd start on New Year's Eve until the end of Christmas Day. And every child and their brothers and sisters Santa came. Now, many of those were children that were so poor, there was just no capacity for Santa Claus gifts. But some were letters from children who were so lonely that they felt forgotten or so frightened that they didn't think they were cared about and protected. And he came. And he went to their house. And he brought joy. And he brought gifts. And usually there were some neighbor kids around that got some too. For 12 years. Embodying Expressing the love. That's not religious. That is who you are as a spiritual being. Jay found a way to do that to children on Christmas Eve. But the truth is, that's what it is all about. All about. And it's not difficult because it's who we really are. So I invite you as you touch the beautiful parts of Christmas from the, the fabulous music that lifts us up to the beautiful manger scenes to Santa Claus. Love the commercialism! <laughs> click, click, click on the roof is not the reindeer anymore. It's me on Amazon.com, okay? <laughs> You know, this is, the <laughs> who cares? We're giving our love every way we can. Let it flow through us. This Christmas, give love. The gifts are just an excuse to give love. If you don't have the gifts, give love anyhow. If it's somebody you don't even know, give love anyhow. You know, how helpful is it in, in that long line when, you know, somebody's frustrated and tired to just have a smile or a kind word? It's not difficult or that <laughs> poor teller that, <laughs> you know, what a gift. Give love.
I invite you, this, this week, we have a week when the whole universe is inviting us into a consciousness of giving love. Will you commit with me? Make this the week of giving love. I give love this Christmas. Join me. I give love this Christmas. Feel what a joy it is to move that through. Again, I give love this Christmas. Feels so good. Again, I give love this Christmas. And there's a moment. As you've given that. Stop. And be aware. Of all the love. That is being given to you. Bless you. Our heart ministers are available after the service today to offer prayer support for challenges or celebrations. You may see them around the sanctuary, out on the grounds, on the patio, and they are the ones wearing the lavender stoles. And your prayer request can be sent at any time from our website. I ask everyone to please take a connection card from the seat pockets in front of you. We invite each of you to take a moment to fill out this card if you have a prayer request, comment, or a question. And if you're new to Unity, you're invited to fill out the card and to also visit us at the welcome table out on the patio after the service, and we'd enjoy getting to know you better. Thank you for checking the box if you are joining us in our weekly spiritual focus. And our spiritual focus this week is give love this Christmas. The ushers will receive your card with the offering toward the end of the music. It's time for our prosperity celebration. For credit card donations, there are envelopes provided in the seat pockets in front of you. And for those of you watching at home, you can click on the donate button on our Watch Live page. Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore, taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance expressing in our lives. He said, be thankful for every blessing that you gain and grateful for every demonstration as if it were an unexpected treasure dropped in your lap. This will keep your heart fresh for true thanksgiving may be likened to rain falling upon ready soil, refreshing it and increasing its productiveness. I invite you to take your tithe or offering in your hands and to be aware that God is the source of all your good. Repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
All right, so let's bless our children and that marvelous child in you that becomes alive each Christmas together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines through you. So let's take hands and share together our prayer of protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And our peace song. the love and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun.